Thunder. Uh, yes, our speaker today is uh, Carl Mann. Uh, he's a member of the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley, all the way on the other side of the United States, the other side of the United States. I think you're far away from the ocean, but uh, we can understand that. Um, the uh, for the past five years, he's been involved with the Peace Corps and is, re and is a retired from the Peace Corps team at the headquarters in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's going to be talking about the partnership between the Peace Corps and Rotary and having been doing Rotary work in Nepal and partnering with a lot of Peace Corps workers while there, I think we're in for a good talk. So Carl and Megan, uh, welcome to the Rotary Club of Bedford. We'll try to behave while we're listening nicely to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I can, I'd like to share my screen. And give me one second here. Oh. All right. Yeah, you should be able to share. Give it a try. Uh, let's see. All right. Hold on a second. Let me get back to the screen. <laughs> screen sharing. Open. Well, while I am uh, fiddling with uh, Zoom, um, let me tell you uh, briefly about Megan. Um, she was not only uh, gracious to join us with a last minute invitation, but also after having been sick. Um, Megan is uh, the recruiter for the Boston area. She's also a return Peace Corps volunteer and she's also president of the Rotary Club of Dover, New Hampshire. They made her president about a year and a half after she joined the club. So that tells you everything you need to know. Um, I'm, I think I'm now able to share. Uh, you should be seeing a goat, yes? Yes. No, I see yep. many goats. <laughs> many goats. Okay. Well, we'll start with many goats. Now it's full screen. Um, thank you for inviting me to talk to your club. Um, I am going to talk to you a little about the partnership today. Um, the goats are rush hour in steep North Macedonia. Um, I want to talk to you about the partnership between Rotary and Peace Corps. Um, before I do that, I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page in terms of what is Peace Corps. Um, and before I'd be negligent if I didn't um, let you know that I'm also a member of the Victor Fan Club. Uh, he and I had a fantastic, very inspiring day back in November in Boston. Um, so facts about the Peace Corps, it is a US federal government agency. It was established in 1964 by Kennedy, and since 1964, more than 100 uh, uh, countries, have, 180 countries have received Peace Corps volunteers, and a total exceeding 250,000 Americans have, ser have served in Peace Corps. Uh, another quick set of facts, uh, requirements, probably most questions uh, come around this. Um, you do have to be an American citizen to be a Peace Corps volunteer. Uh, the only age limit is you have to be 18 years old. There is no upper age limit. And you have to buy into the idea of peace and friendship. I think being Rotarians, that's not too big a jump. And the service opportunities range between nine and 27 months. So a few different programs there. Um, volunteers come from all over the United States, all geographies and all backgrounds. It really is uh, more and more very representative of the United States, including older volunteers. So about 5% of volunteers are in the 50 plus uh, age category, which is uh, where I was and still am. I mentioned that Peace Corps' mission is to promote uh, peace, world peace, and friendship. And I think 
uh, you know, Rotarians will not have a hard time signing up for that. But a reasonable question is, well, how? How do you do that? And so um, Peace Corps has three different goals that it engages in in order to work towards peace and friendship. And the first thing that volunteers and the primary responsibility that volunteers have as their job when they're in Peace Corps is skills transfer. They are helping local citizens learn to speak English, agricultural skills, health, health uh, skills, uh, economic development, organizational development, on and on. But the primary way that we're, pro we're pro um, promoting peace and friendship is, is through the building of skills. Um, the second goal that we have is to share American culture. That is to share American culture with the citizens of the country that we are guests of. Many of them have formed their perspective on America from uh, movie and TVs, and that is not necessarily a, a real picture. So this is a way of breaking down those stereotypes. And then as you'll learn today a little bit, um, each of us, as we come back from our volunteer experience, we share with our family and our friends and our colleagues about the host country that we experience. So you'll learn a little bit about North Macedonia today. Um, because there's probably many, many more questions than I can answer, um, I do commend you to the Peace Corps website, it's peacecorps.gov, and it's a fantastic website with pretty much every question you could ever imagine. I wanna take you back to uh, just almost three years ago today, uh, we had 7,400 volunteers serving in 60 countries. And eight days later, we had zero volunteers in zero countries. It was the first time ever there was a global evacuation. I don't think we have to have uh, a guessing game as to what the cause was. But I mentioned this one as it's a historical fact. It's interesting. But the second thing is, I think it's helpful for people to have a counter narrative to that uh, famous, the government can't shoot straight uh, uh, narrative. Um, you think about what an organization has to have in terms of its capacity to be able to bring uh, 7,400 volunteers home in eight days and no one got COVID and no one got lost along the way. Um, so jumping forward to today, we now have about 1,100 volunteers serving in 50 countries. Um, so we are rebuilding. Uh, we started sending volunteers back just about a year ago uh, right now. So we are in a rebuilding uh, mode and I'll talk a little bit more about that and how Rotary is helping with that. I do wanna turn the clock back a little bit to personalize this because I was a Peace Corps volunteer. Uh, I started my service in 2017 in what was then called Macedonia. And for those of you who don't know, it's uh, just about 200 miles east of the boot of Italy. It's part of the former Yugoslavia, and it's a country with a lot of contrasts. It has a lot of traditional old behavior still. So you see a lot of horses and carts and a lot of very, very small agriculture and very small businesses. Um, you see people setting up vegetable stands just right on the sidewalk, wherever they want to open up shop. It's also quite modern. A lot of uh, a big international companies have established IT back office operations there. And it's quite young. This is a group of high school uh, volunteers, pretty much like Interact, but uh, organized at a high school level. And it's also a very beautiful country. This is Lake Okrid, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, the beautiful Strumitsa uh, Carnival draws people from all around the country as well as other countries. Um, and a lot of natural beauty. This is Matka Canyon, um, beautiful, clear water. Uh, regrettably, it's also a very polluted country. This is Skopje, the capital city. In a winter day, the air there can be as bad as Beijing. 
or even worse. And there is just an enormous amount of trash. I've never seen so much trash in my life. Um, their education system is, uh, I would say, uneven, shall we say. There's my friend Yosef here, who's a young lawyer, and one of his clients who was never provided with even one day of education his whole life. And he signs his name with an X. Um, it was very moving to see that and to realize how fortunate uh, we are to have a better education system. Um, for background, Peace Corps has been in North Macedonia since 1996. There's typically about 100 volunteers there. We just returned volunteers there back in September, and I think there's about a dozen in service right now. There's three different sectors that are uh, engaged in in Macedonia. We do teaching English, about 40% of our volunteers. We have a handful of people that are teaching special needs. And then the rest are in what's called community development, which can be economic development, organizational development, or some other kind of broad bucket. I um, was cited for my two years assignment. I was cited in the city of Steep, which you could see it's in the eastern part of the country. Um, it's a university city, a population of about 40,000 people the day before I got there. And the day I arrived, uh, the population increased to 4,003. And that's because I was joined by two other volunteers, Lauren and Lex, who were going to be teaching English in uh, local public schools elementary schools. My, my primary job was organizational development. I was working with a, a small legal clinic that provides free legal service to a disadvantaged ethnic group called Roma. Um, and our clients were everything from little this little girl who had never had a birth certificate. She was born at home and she, she needed to have uh, a birth certificate in order to be able to start uh, school. And then this uh, widow on the left, uh, she had absolutely no documentation that she'd ever even been born or married or anything. And when her husband passed away, she had no access to any state services or benefits. So just that kind of basic blocking and tackling uh, legal work that can make a, a big difference in someone's life. On my second day in Steep, I was extremely lucky to run into Zoran, who was the Rotary Club president of the newly chartered Rotary Club of Steep. Their club had been in existence for all of about five months. And at that point, I'd been in Rotary for 15 years. So you can imagine uh, how excited I was to know that I had automatically a, a Rotary network in the town. It was about 20 members, all very connected business professionals and teachers at the university and, um, and other professionals. So it was a fantastic group for me to connect with. And they were happy to have um, an experienced Rotarian to be able to give them some guidance. We uh, fairly quickly decided to do a pilot test to do some collaboration between uh, the Rotary Club of Sheep and then Rotary Clubs that I had relationships with in California, um, also engaged the local Peace Corps volunteers, and then that group of high school volunteers that I showed you a picture of earlier, we got them involved as well. We did a bunch of different projects. One of the first ones was uh, a book drive where we, we collected funds and, and books for uh, English language storybooks for the um, children in the local elementary schools where Lauren and Lex were teaching. And uh, we had enough books that we were able to give some to the local library as well. And then we engaged the high school kids to come in and they all knew English really well. And so they were teaching English to these young Macedonian kids on the, on the Saturday mornings. It was really a nice project and made possible because of these uh, book donations. Um, the, the good results of the projects that we were doing caught the attention of Peace Corps 
headquarters in North Macedonia, as well as the Rotary Clubs of North Macedonia. And so this is a signing ceremony. We signed a formal memorandum of understanding, a strategic partnership for Rotary and Peace Corps to work together in North Macedonia to see what we could do collaborating with each other. And they asked me to stay on for a third year and to expand on the success that we had. They asked uh, that we get more Rotary clubs involved, both in North Macedonia as well as in the United States, to take on more and bigger projects and to get more Peace Corps um, volunteers involved. And we were making really good progress um, on that. We had five clubs that had a Peace Corps, five Rotary clubs that had a Peace Corps volunteer actually embedded with them and helping them out. And we had a number of projects that were getting uh, started. Um, and then the question, what could possibly go wrong? Um, COVID came in and put the brakes on everything. Um, we were able to continue doing some things uh, remotely if for the two years that we were locked out. But um, we are a little bit back to not ground zero because the idea is there, but we do have um, a lot of work to do to get back to where we were. Um, I've had a lot of time to be thinking about this partnership with Peace Corps and whether or not it's a big growth opportunity for Rotary. And I, I'm being um, rhetorical here because I, you probably already know what I think the answer is to that. Um, there's really three parts that I think that are really important for Rotary in this partnership. And the first is awareness of Rotary. I was really surprised how few Peace Corps volunteers, these are American citizens, uh, how few of them, and they're service-oriented American citizens, how few of them had ever heard of Rotary. And so just by having the partnership, one of the benefits for Rotary can be to increase awareness of Rotary among service-oriented Americans. Um, the second thing is if we get Peace Corps um, volunteers involved, whether it's while they're in service or when they've come back from their service, I think they can help us with the effectiveness of the international projects we do, either as a club or as a district or even uh, Rotary International. And finally, um, you know, the number one topic that every Rotary Club is interested in is how do we grow membership? And I'm a big fan of having Peace Corps volunteers um, get involved with their local Rotary Club when they when they come back. And if, if it makes sense for both parties um, for them to become a member of their local club. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, what Rotary uh, is doing to try and promote this. There is uh, work going on at the national level, the international level, the district level, and the club level. Um, internationally, at the Rotary Convention coming up in uh, late May, there will be uh, a big peace-serving uh, peace organization section within the House of Friendship. So if any of you are going to Melbourne, um, I invite you to come to that. I'll be there. There's going to be a lot of uh, Rotarians who also happen to have served in Peace Corps. And there will also be lots of Rotarians who are from countries where Peace Corps ha either has volunteers or has had volunteers. So there's already quite a lot of interaction and knowledge between the two. That's one of the things I've learned. Also, each year we have what's called Rotary Peace Corps Week. It's usually in mid-September. And they have things like online uh, sessions of how to develop a Rotary Peace Corps partnership project. They have a panel discussion with Rotarians who have served in Peace Corps. It's really interesting and it can spur a lot of good ideas. On the district level, um, there was actually a RILA put together in Ukraine. I was really happy to hear you all talking about your RILA efforts. I'm a former RILA chair and was involved in the district level for Ro Ro uh, RILA organization in, um, in San Diego. So I have a lot of heart for that, but 
They did develop a RILA in Ukraine. It was the first time ever, and it was developed by a Peace Corps volunteer who's now a Rotary Fellow um, doing graduate work in England. Um, and then districts are also promoting the partnership at their district conferences. So it's a good way to get more knowledge that the, that the uh, partnership exists. At the club level, there's a few things you can do. One is engaging with a local Peace Corps recruiter and start that relationship. There's a lot of opportunity for collaboration. That's why I asked Megan to join us um, on this call. Uh, they can help connect you with current and prospective volunteers. Some volunteers who are applying to Peace Corps may need to increase the service part of their resume. And if uh, Rotary Club has some projects going and they need volunteers, that's a good way for you to get more volunteers and for them to get more volunteer experience, maybe learn more about how projects are organized. Um, the Peace Corps recruiter is a good connection for your youth programs, RILA, Interact, and Rotaract as well, because so many Peace Corps volunteers are young people. It's just a really good natural introduction to make. Um, it's a very good opportunity for those young people to consider doing international service through Peace Corps or another opportunity like that. And the other thing is, if you have the opportunity to have input on who uh, might be speaking at a RILA uh, event, if you have speakers, Peace Corps, return Peace Corps volunteers or Peace Corps recruiters would be very good for that as well. Um, the other thing that they can help you do is help you get connected to the Peace Corps alumni that are in your area um, and help them. Uh, know more about your club and what you're doing and perhaps be able to um, engage with you in some of your projects or help with some of your events. Um, you can also help support volunteers who are preparing to leave. That can come in a, a number of different ways. Um, but as people are getting ready to go off to spend two years of service internationally, they often uh, can use some help that Rotary Clubs can can help provide. Um, I like to leave one last thing, um, and that is to show you this picture of my friend Katie. You can tell she's from Texas because of her little bag on the back of her uh, bicycle. And she's looking off into the future. And I'd like to encourage you to consider Peace Corps as part of your future. I told you that there is no upper age limit. I served from age 61 to age 66 um, between being a Peace Corps volunteer and then actually working for Peace Corps. So I would give you um, that as something to think about. If not for you, I would encourage you to talk to your friends and work colleagues and others who may have interest in serving internationally. Peace Corps can be a, a fantastic option for them. With that, I'd like to open it up to any questions and just thank you. And I also will uh, make sure you all get the contact information for Megan so that you guys can connect with her and hopefully um, make some good things happen in the Boston Bedford area. Thank you. I got a question because I'm very excited about all this. Megan, you, you have my link so we can get a talk. Um, I was accepted into the Peace Corps right out of college. And I was all excited about getting ready to do it. And the very next day I got a phone call from the principal of the school I attended as a child saying, Ralph, would you like to teach in your old fifth grade classroom? And I go, oh. <laughs> I ended up being a teacher and I uh, had to deny the, the opportunity to work with the Peace Corps. But through Rotary, I got involved with the Rotary Volunteer Grant Program, which was going on about 10 years ago, and did a literacy program in Nepal and partnered up with a lot of Peace Corps workers informally. But uh, I was just impressed with what all the Peace Corps people were doing. 
but they were even more impressed with the fact that with the rotary connection, I was getting an allowance of $50 a day to cover my expenses. And they were shocked because they didn't have any funds hardly at all to cover their needs. I used up all that 50 by bringing the people I worked with to dinner every night for a meeting. And we just, you know, for the whole team, it only cost 15 bucks, but it was worth it. And, uh, and we ended up using the, the money from Rotary to, you know, you know help cover the, the literacy program I was involved with. Yes, I think partnering with our Rotary projects, Victor maybe talked to you, oh, Victor's already left. No, he's just out. Oh yeah, and, uh, and he, um, he, we did another uh, literacy education program in, uh, in Kenya and uh, through MIT, but that again would have been an ideal place to bring in Peace Corps workers. So yes, yeah, so let's build a good partnership. The, alum, uh, the alumni program sounds really super. Let's keep this going. So Megan, yeah, I think you and I are going to become good friends. I hope it's okay. <laughs> Tell them who you are. Oh, I'm Ralph Hammond. Uh, I'm a Bethany Rotary. But anyway, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> no, this is really, this is very exciting stuff. And I think it's a powerful tool for Rotary and for Rotary to help the other way. Judy? Okay. Not exactly a question, but just a comment. Um, I hadn't realized what year the Peace Corps started. I guess my older brother was the first class because in 1964, he and his wife um, went down to the Dominican Republic right out of college. Can I that's, interject that's... one thing? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Cal, I don't mean to call you out, but it actually started in 1961. So that's a typo. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I guess uh, March, March so, 1961. So we just hit our, our uh, 62nd anniversary this, this yeah. past week. Um, I, I confess I'm actually in France. And so in France, they're six hours ahead of where you are, but they're six, <laughs> they're four years behind. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I, I, I confess, I remember at one point in my life, I wanted to join the Peace Corps when I was a lot younger, before I joined the, the Navy. And after joining the Navy, my life took a different direction. And I always think to myself, I should have really joined the Peace Corps. I really should have. And now that I'm looking at myself and the things that I'm committed myself to, and I have a service dog, you know, I would love to do things for the Peace Corps, but I can't really travel as much as I would have loved to before. But I really appreciate it. I mean, I travel, don't get me wrong. But the dog stays here. I don't take him to different countries and things. So, but I appreciate it. And I would love to help you guys, whatever the Rotary wants to help with and do stuff here at home. I would love to be a part of it. Megan, I have a question for you. Um, so we're going to pretend that Cal isn't even here, right? <laughs> So I'm the Rala chair for 79 times. Oh, he's so cute. Okay. But he's still, he's still listening. I can tell. <laughs> um, so I'm the Rala chair for Rotary 7910. So we're Central Mass. And um, we may be full up, but I'd love to talk with you about the possibility of presenting at our Rotary Expo at Rila this year. It's the last weekend, the last full weekend in June. So I'll get Ralph's. Information. Yeah, definitely. Um, I dropped my email in the chat. Um, so feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, I'm Thank excited you. to talk yeah, more about it. Too. Yeah, that would well, be that. One you. thing I, um, I think it is interesting for you all to know, I've spoken, I was an Interact advisor for a number of years with several different clubs. And, um, and I've also spoken to a lot of Interactors since Peace Corps. And their awareness of Peace Corps was quite low. And their, but once they find out what it is, their interest is really, really high. But in order to be a competitive um, applicant for Peace Corps, you need to have some volunteer experience. And so one of the things I think could be really good out of this is to have interactors and Ryla, Rylarians, we called them, um, know that they have this thing that they can be aiming for that's out, you know, after they go to college, 
they can be working volunteer work to help build their resume so that when they apply to Peace Corps, they're going to be much better prepared um, and much more competitive. Absolutely. They can't they can't be it till they see it. Right. Yeah. So important. Thank you for all you're doing. If if someone wants to sign up, there's a question. What's the obligation? You want me to cover that one, Cal? So uh, there's no obligation. It's just oh, yeah. as there's, easy I as mean, pie. I'm kidding. You I'm kidding. Want to join Peace Corps? Great. <laughs> talk to us. We're definitely the people to talk to. But no pressure. I always tell people when I go and do Rotary Club talks, I'm not here to talk you into being a Peace Corps volunteer. I want you to know more about the partnership. But if it's something that sparks your interest, great, wonderful. Um, as far as like what our actual programs are, so there's the normal Peace Corps service, that's 27 months total. It's three months of training that's done in the country of service and then two years of service in a community within that country. That's kind of the general fresh out of college, younger American volunteers that I tend to recruit um, as a general recruiter. But um, people who are more mid-level or professionals who have some experience could qualify for Peace Corps response. And these are shorter term high impact assignments. And these are anywhere, um, Cal said nine months, some of them, they're usually between six and 12 months in length. Um, so, you know, a lot easier of a, a shorter time frame for people who maybe can't devote two years of service, but they still want to give back um, so those there's kind of two different umbrellas under Peace Corps. There's normal Peace Corps and then Peace Corps response. I think, Jim, do you Another have a question? question? Uh, yeah. How are the locations of service determined? That's yeah. a, 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 a good question, a big question. The process uh, starts with a country essentially asking for Peace Corps volunteers. And then the time from when they ask to the time volunteers um, arrive can vary widely. And I'll give you the one most recent example and you, you'll appreciate it just based on knowing uh, American history of late. So in 20, I think it was 2014, uh, then President Obama went to Vietnam. And one of the things that he said coming back from there is we're going to, we've been invited to have Peace Corps volunteers come to Vietnam. And the first volunteers arrived there a few months ago. So that was almost nine years. Now, you know, there was a change of administration, there are two changes of administration. There was also changes in Vietnam and COVID and everything else. It just, it's a complicated process. Uh, they don't just helicopter people in without invitation. And there's a lot of work that goes on in advance to make sure that volunteers have real work and that there's, uh, that, that it's applicable to the local needs. It's not something that we fly in and tell them what we're, going to do for them. It's it's a collaborative process of understanding what they want and what we can provide. And that's not always possible, but um, it has happened a lot. And um, you know, 250,000 volunteers have served in 180 countries. That tells you that it's uh, it's possible. With a long lead time, though, it would seem to me like a volunteer might have no opportunity whatsoever to express a preference of where he might want to go. I think you all need to have Megan make a whole presentation about the actual <laughs> application process and everything. Um, it, it's, you know, it's, that's a really good question, but it's re requires like a little more explanation because it's a pretty dynamic question. I mean, the, the short answer is there's a lot more choice now. They revamped the application process back in 2015. Prior to that, you apply to the Peace Corps and you figured out where you were going when you got your invitation. Now you could actually apply directly to a specific job in a specific country, or you could leave it up to more broad and let us determine where sure. we think you're gonna be a best fit. But yeah, Cal's exactly right. It starts at that government level, asking to have Peace Corps volunteers come and work in some of the sectors. 
Um, but then each individual community who also receives a volunteer has applied to receive a volunteer. They've identified some work that they would need help with, um, certain people in the community that, that the volunteer can work with, housing, all of that kind of stuff. So we're not in any location that doesn't want us there. Well, and I had a question because I had to, I, I got interrupted. And I had to walk away and this might have been covered, but um, what kind of, you know, security things do you guys have in place for your members who travel to diff these different places in case something happens to them as Americans abroad? Well, I think um, it's extensive. There's a lot of, in that first three months of training, volunteers are uh, provided with a lot of safety and security training. There's a lot of resources. Um, I think probably the best evidence is uh, that in eight days, we were able to evacuate globally wow. um, 7,400 volunteers. And so that speaks to the training, it speaks to the resources, and it speaks to, I think, the quality of the organization. So there's, there's a, you know, a lot of concerns and depending on the country and the circumstances there, um, it, the answer to your question is different, but it, it suffice to say, we don't send volunteers into a place unless we uh, are going to feel good that they can safely operate. Megan, um, I, I'm working with a club foot project right now in Kenya and partnering with the Rotary Clubs over there or any project that the Peace Corps does. That if you can do that in partnership with a local Rotary Club, gives you a whole lot of steps on the, as you all, I'm sure you know, we're gonna become good friends. Just give us a call, uh, <laughs> Don will get you on our TV show. I think we'll have some good things happening. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna ring the bell to end the meeting. Thank you so much, Hal and Megan. This was wonderful, we learned so much. We'll thanks, thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>